Let us remember little James tonight. Brother Steve, come up and leave some prayer, please. I like to remember brother and sister Wells up at Columbus. They, they're they up there, and she's had been put into a nursing home now. And uh, he goes visit her every day, but he can't hardly see, and he's running around on a little scooter now. But where he's at, he's able to get on a little bus, and they take him down to the nursing home every day, and they even give him a meal down there, so he's taking care of him that way. But uh, he has no church family there to speak of. He's got family around there, but even they complain if he sends a type check in anywhere. It's, and it's just they're, they're really down. His spirits seem pretty good considering, but she just... Uh, Really seems very depressed, and just remember them and, and others in like shape. There are just so many to remember. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, Father, we thank Thee again for the opportunity to gather before Thy throne, Lord. For Father, Lord, we know that we can come before Thee for the blood of Jesus Christ has washed all of our sins, Lord. All of our iniquities, Father, has cleansed us, made us white as snow. Otherwise, Lord, we'd have no... No effort could be done to ask for thy grace and mercy, but it was freely given, my God. Now, Father, you see these ones, Lord, that in need this night. Sickness in body, situations of life, Father. Lord, you see every case, every need, my God. Yes. Father, may you take away the pain, the suffering, the discouragement, Lord, the depression, my God. Father, may you just lift up the hands that are hanging, Lord. Lift up our faces toward thee, O God. Heavenly Father, lift up our spirits, we pray. We give Thee praise and glory, Father, for Thou alone are worthy of all praise and all glory. Yes. Father, we ask You to be with this service. Bless every singer. Bless Brother David as he bring forth to singing, Lord. Every musician we pray for, Father. And Lord, we pray for the messenger this night. Lord, that You'd give him strength and boldness to bring forth the message that You have burnt within his heart for our sakes, O God. And Father, we lift up Israel to Thee, Lord. Father, Thou knowest exactly what the time frame is. But Lord, the things You've showed our pastor, Lord, and brought things out, Lord, and things we see in the media, Lord, we can't stand much longer, Lord, for things are ticking away, my God. Heavenly Father, may Thy perfect will be done in Israel, Lord. And Lord, remember this nation that we live in, Lord. Father, without the vision of George Washington, and, Lord, we have a belief that we are this land that Israel will flee to, Lord. It would look like there would be no hope for this land. But, Father, we thank you that we do have hope for it, my God. Yes. Lord, thou knowest all things, Lord. Thou see the situation as it is. We're thankful that we have the freedom to worship thee, Lord, as we see fit, Lord, as your truth dictates, my God. Father, we thank you and we praise thee. In that precious name of Jesus Christ we ask, amen. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow, many arrows pierce my soul, turn my thoughts but my Lord leads me on through and I must win. Well, oh, I want to see Him look upon His face. There to see forever of His saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all pass home at last, ever to rejoice. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to Him, He will give me light. Satan's snares may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside, but my Lord goes ahead, leaves whatever be tied. Well, oh, I want to see Him look upon His face. 
There to see forever of His saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Tears all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. The wind in valleys, lo, I look toward the mountain high. And behold my Savior there, heaving in the fire. With a tender hand outstretched toward the valley low. Oh, guiding me, I can see as I onward go. Well, oh, I want to see Him look upon His face. There to sing forever of His saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Here's all past. Oh, my last every to rejoice. Well, when before me billows rise from the mighty deep, then my Lord directs my bark, He does safely keep, and He leads me gently on to the world below. Oh, He's a real Friend to me, oh, I love him so. Well, oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Tears all past home at last, ever to rejoice. When I look all around and see the good things He's done for me, I know I'm unworthy of them all. But His blessings He freely gives, I owe all my life to Him. I've got so much to thank Him for. Yes, I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for, you see. He has been so good to me. Oh, and when I think, oh, of what He's done and where He has brought me from, I've got so much to thank him for oh and each day oh while on my way I kneel and just stop to say thank you Lord oh for all you've done for me and someday I'll reach oh sweet heaven sure oh please let me kneel once more, I've got so much to thank Him for. Yes, I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for, you see. He has been so good to me, and when I think, Oh, of what He's done and where He has brought me from. I've got so much to thank Him for. Yes, I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for. You see, He has been so good to me. Oh, and when I think, oh, of what He's done and where He has brought me from, I've got so much to thank Him for. We do have so much to thank Him for. We praise Him. You may be seated. Brother Dwayne. Brother Dwayne, come sing for us, please. Then, Daniel, you get us a song after that.
good to be here. Man from Galilee. In a manger long ago, I know it's really so. A babe was born to save man from his sin. John saw him on the shore, the lamp for evermore. Oh, Christ the crucified of Calvary. Oh, I love that man from Galilee. For he done so very much for me. He's forgiven every sin. A deep peace came within. I love that man from Galilee. The woman at the well, he all her sins did tell. How five husbands she had at the time. She's forgiven ever seen a deep peace came within. She cried, come see this man from Galilee. Oh, I love that man from Galilee. He had done so very much for me. He forgiven all my sins, placed the Holy Ghost within. I love that man from Galilee. The lame was made to walk, the dumb was made to talk. With fire spoken with love upon the sea. The blind was made to see, I know it could only be. By the mercies of that man from Galilee. Oh, I love that man from Galilee. For he done so very much for me. He forgiven all my sins, made the Holy Ghost. I love that man from Galilee. Thank you. All right, Daniel. And Sister Cassie, you got a song? I don't need a diamond on each finger And I don't need a second home for the winter And I don't need the wealth of a king Cause when I found Jesus I found everything so who cares if life's not always fair And who cares if I'm not a millionaire And who cares if the world thinks I'm square Cause I finally found someone who cares I don't need my name 
in neon lights And I don't need a doctor messing with my mind And I don't need your get-rich plan Cause my investments are in glory land So who cares if life's not always fair And who cares if I'm not a millionaire And who cares if the world thinks I'm square Cause I finally found someone who cares Who cares if life's not always fair And who cares if I'm not a millionaire And who cares if the world thinks I'm square Cause I finally found someone who cares matter does it what the world thinks as long as we have our hearts right with God it don't matter about the rest of it we thank the Lord for his purpose for us all right sister if you come on please and hoping Becky get us a song please Just say, don't worry, got a song. All right, all you sisters, come on. <laughs> she asked. She asked for help.
I just want to praise the Lord. I don't know what to say, but just to praise Him. He is still with me right now. I just thank Him for helping me. Now, all of you didn't come up. You all come up and sing. <laughs> How about the Shaw family singing for us tonight? I think all of them are here, so come right on. you gonna do the old prophet cried bacon boy and me came and then we're gonna die you see there's been a famine here it's not rained for so long and all the food that we have stored is gone He said, rearrange your plans, I've got good news for you. Bake a cake for me first, and God will see you through. So with a can of oil and a handful of milk, and sorrow in her eyes, she put the mix upon the fire. And it began to rise, and as faith began to rise, God's blessings began to fall. And those who trust Him for their bread, He feeds them one and all. And if you feel you reached the end, then there's no place to go. His barrel's never empty to feed a hungry soul. Every day at supper time, she'd walk to the old milk can. She'd scrape the bottom to fill her cup, but God kept putting in. As he had to walk on by He thought he had another life But God's barrels don't run dry And as faith begins to rise God's blessings begin to fall and Those who trust Him for their bread He feeds them one and all if you feel you reach the end and there's no place to go, this barrel's never empty to feed a hungry soul. And as faith begins to rise, God's blessings begin to fall. Those who trust Him for their bread, He feeds them one and all. And if you feel you reach the end and there's no place to go, His barrel's never empty to feed the hungry soul.
be shouting on the hills of glory. Shouting on the hills, yes, shouting on the hills, when we reach the land of which we heard the story. They'll be shouting on the hills of God. What a happy time is coming when we reach our home in heaven and the burdens which we won't bear no more. When the angels sound the trumpet calling us to that bright city, they'll be shouting on that everlasting shore. Oh, they'll be shouting on the hills of glory. Shouting on those hills, yes, shouting on those hills. When we reach the land of which we heard the story, they'll be shouting on those hills of God. On that blessed happy morning, when old friends are reunited, and with all our loved ones we'll meet again. In that happy land eternal, we will live in joy supernal, and with Jesus or his angels ever reign. Oh, they'll be shouting on the hills of glory, shouting on the hills, yes, shouting on the hills, when we reach the land of which we heard the story. They'll be shouting on the hills of God. Oh, they'll be shouting on the hills of glory. Shouting on the hills, yes, shouting on the hills. When we reach the land of which we heard the story, they'll be shouting on the hills of God. the Lord for something he's done for me over the last three to four years. Um, it had got to where I had a lot of pain in my body and the doctors had told, you know, they told me, they said, you can't keep going to the emergency room because the insurance is getting upset. So they thought they would give me medicine to help keep me at home and keep me from being in the emergency room. But what they gave me, you know, they said, now you have to take one of a morning and one at night. Every day, whether you want to or not, they said as soon as your feet hits the floor, you take one, and when you go to bed, you take one. And I thought, I don't like doing it that way. I thought, if I have a good day, I'll never know, because that medicine would be in my body. And I discussed it with the doctor. I told him, I said, I don't want to do it that way. And he says, well, that's the way that medicine works. And I said, well, I know that's the way that medicine's supposed to work. But I said, I'm not going to do it that way. And he says, well, he says, we'll have to discuss that with the person who prescribed it. And I said, well, you go, go discuss it with him because I said, I'm not doing it that way. And so I just used it when I needed it. But then it got to where it was like there was more pain and more discomfort here and there. And I was always tired. I was always sleepy. And I just, I had got to the point where I told God, I said, I don't want to live this way. I said, if this is the way I'm going to live, I said, then I want you to take me home. I said, I'm not going to live doing it that way. And I've been up for prayer quite a few times for it. And so just in the last, since Ronnie's mom had passed away, going through that ordeal, I just, I was getting tired and exhausted, and it was like I had to use more of it, and I still didn't like that. I didn't want to use it that way. <laughs> But within the last within the last six months, after the last time I come up for prayer, I went home that night and I said, God, I said, please do something. I said, I don't want to use this medicine this way. And I just want to thank God because since that night, I have not used that one particular drug at all. I've had other medicines there. But I've not used that one particular drug at all. I've had some discomfort, but it has gotten to where I can take an Aleve or an Advil, and I'm fine. And I just want to thank God because I know he did it, and he knows what else I need, 
And I know that my day's coming. I know that God's going to take care of everything in my body. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I know he's going to take care of it. And I don't care what that dirty devil tells me. I'm going to be fine. And God is my healer. And I know it's coming. That's right tonight. Sometimes the devil wants to get above you, but you just got to get on his level. Tell him who you are, that you're a child of God, and and that you're living your life right, and that he just needs to get away. Thank you, sister, for that testimony tonight. God is a great God, and we thank him for his greatness. I know <clears throat> Brother Bud was feeling pretty bad this morning, but then he called me back and said he would be here. And also, uh, I thank the Lord for my brother and for uh, the Lord helping him at this time to be able to be here and bring forth the message because I'm looking forward to it. Let us stand, if we would, and I'll turn the service over to Brother Bud. Amen. Let us just look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, once again, we do humbly bow in your divine presence. And we thank you, Father, for the many precious blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And we thank you for this privilege that you have granted to us to be able to come together as a body of Christian believers to have fellowship and to be seated around your precious table. And Father, once again, I ask, as a human vessel of clay, that you would anoint this vessel. And Father, help me to speak and say the things that you would have to be said here tonight. And may you touch my precious brothers and sisters, not only those present here, but those listening on the internet, and those from around the world. May you touch their needs and minister to them. Father, may you comfort their hearts and work your perfect will in every situation. Father, we commit ourselves into your hand and we commit the remainder of this service unto you. And we're asking, Father, that you would just make your presence known here. Father, I Commit everything into your hand now, for I humbly ask these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, you can be seated. You'll have to excuse my coughs. <coughs> I've been congested quite a bit, but... I feel good, and I feel good in the Lord, and I'm happy in the Lord, and I'm going to be continuing with the subject that I was on last Thursday, and the title of my message is Rejoice in the Lord Always, and Keep Pressing On, and I have received several emails and some phone calls this week thanking me for this message, but thank the Lord for this message because He is the one that put this thought in my heart and it is His Word. So I thank you for your kind words and May the Lord ever be glorified. There are a lot of people that are suffering with sickness in their bodies. 
They are suffering with depression and anxieties and fears. And the devil is attacking the saints of God like never before. Because the devil knows that we are at the end of this grace age dispensation. And he is doing everything that he can to bring discouragement and to bring fear. But brothers and sisters, we have God, our Heavenly Father, as our keeper and as our guide and as our strength. We're not <clears throat> battling this battle alone. And I'm going to get into some things. I don't know if I'll get into it tonight or not. But, thank you, Brother Allen. I'm going to show through the Word of God that we're not battling on our own. I'm going to go back in the book of Philippians where I started <clears throat> last Thursday night. And I'm going to take those two passages of Scripture both in the fourth chapter and in the third chapter. And I'm going to the fourth chapter first of all. Because I feel that this is very necessary that I read these again. <clears throat> we might think, brothers and sisters, that nobody in the world could know or understand what we're going through. But I assure you that there are precious people that are going through just as bad of things as you are. And no, we can't understand as human vessels of clay what <clears throat> somebody's feelings might be. But the Lord knows what we stand in need of before we even ask Him. He is well aware of our circumstances. And before I read the Scriptures, I know I have mentioned over the past years that I have been here about my hunting incident. I don't call it an accident because it wasn't an accident. It was an incident where I got shot. But, and you have all heard what the doctors said was my outcome. But what I haven't told is, or I don't believe I've told it. If I have, then you'll hear it again. I was working in a machining company in Indianapolis, and I got laid off. And I went to work for a friend of mine in construction. And the work was very sparse. And the company, if we would pay our insurance premium, they would let us keep our medical insurance. So I had been making my insurance payments. I, th I think I had been off... Uh, six or eight weeks, and so I had made one insurance premium. And the night, the night before that I got shot, my premium was due. And I didn't get down to pay the premium. So when I got shot, as far as I knew, Brother Jerry, my insurance had expired. So I called a member of the union 
the following day after I got shot and I explained to him what happened. And he said, well, you're very fortunate because we don't send the premium in until Monday morning. So if you have your wife here at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock, one or the other, on Monday morning with your premium, you will be still be covered. So Brother Adams, that was the grace of God. I did not know how that we could afford the medical bills that would be coming in. So I have been in despair. And I realize what despair is. But I also realize this, that God is able to meet your every need. Starting in the fourth chapter of Philippians and in the fourth verse again. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. You might say, brothers and sisters, how can I rejoice in the circumstances that I'm going through with? I say to you, no matter what your circumstances are, obey the Word of God. And the Word of God says, rejoice in the Lord always. Philippians, the fourth chapter. Let your... Moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Did you catch that? It says, with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Brothers and sisters, in our despair, we can still be thankful to God because we know that He is a deliverer. We know that He is our strength and our refuge, a shelter that we can run into. In times of despair. So when you are in despair and you make your request known unto the Lord, make it with thanksgiving. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds Through Christ Jesus. And as I believe I said last Thursday night, the devil does not only attack our body. He attacks our mind. Many are suffering from deep depression. And that is an attack from Satan against the mind. And if he can keep you downcast, if He can keep the thing that is depressing you heavy upon your mind, then His job is pretty easy. He can keep you depressed. But brothers and sisters, if we follow the words of God, then we can be brought out Of the depression. Finally brethren. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue. And if there be any praise, 
think on these things. If we do not allow our minds to be boggled up with the negative side of things, you might say, Brother Bud, how can I keep from that? As you make your petition known to God, go with thanksgiving in your heart, knowing that God is a deliverer. Think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received, and heard, and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Brothers and sisters, I hope that we are listening to the Word of God. If we think on the positive side of things, If we are obedient to the Word of God, then, and do them, the peace of God shall be with us. Now, right over into the third chapter. Again, the 13th and 14th verse. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before. Now, brothers and sisters, a lot of people, I know what I'm talking about, a lot of people focus on what has happened To them in the past. They do not look for. Forward. To the things. Of the promise. Of God. They stay focused. What is behind. What has brought them. To. Their dilemma. And to their depression. And as long as you. Focus. On things behind. And you do not look forward. To the promises of God. Satan will keep you. In a state of depression. I'm saying to somebody now. Whether it be someone here. Or someone listening. Put the things behind you. That has brought your despair and depression and circumstances of life, put them behind you. I'm going to say this, and I've never, to my knowledge, said it as I was preaching. Put them behind you, thus saith the Lord. And see what God will do for you. Too long you have lived in despair. Too long you have let the things of the past weigh you down. And that is why You're in your dilemma. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Press on, brother and sister. Put those things behind you. 
and reaching forth, take hold of the promises of God. And then you shall see the hand of God at work in your life. Your health will begin to get better. Your depression will begin to leave you. Let us go to the book of James. The first chapter. I'm going to read verses 2 through 4 and then the 12th verse. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Brother Bud, how in the world can I count it joy when the tests come my way? Obey the Word of God. Count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. And that word temptations can also mean tests. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations or tests. Brethren and sisters, Verse 12, blessed is the man that endureth temptation or testings. For when he is tried and shall, or he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. That is a promise, brothers and sisters, from God that we will receive a crown of life. Count it all joy. What do we do in our despair? What do, do we do when the test comes? The human nature is to feel sorry. For ourself. Is that not true? But brothers and sisters. The scripture says. Count it. All joy. Knowing. That your heavenly father. Hears your requests. And he knows your need. And if we go through our tests scripturally, according to His will and according to His word, the victory most certainly will be ours. Can you, I'm going to ask this question, and I'm not only asking it to those that are sitting here tonight, but there are precious souls that are listening from the, around the world. Can you and will you 
count it all joy in your temptation and in your trial. Will you count it all joy? Go to Nehemiah. <clears throat> the eighth chapter. I'm just going to read verses 5 through 10, but you can read the rest of it if you want to when you get home. Ezra, or Nehemiah, the 8th chapter, starting in the 5th verse. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. For he was above all the people and when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen. With lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. And Jeshua and Bani and Shereba. I may not be pronouncing these names right, but you can read them. And Jamin, Akabub, I ain't going to try to pronounce these. And the Levites caused the people to understand the law. And the people stood in their place. So they read the book in the law of God distinctly. And gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, which is the Tershath, or Tershatha, and Ezra, the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy. Unto our Lord, neither be ye sorry for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord, brothers and sisters, is your strength. If you can do what? James said, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations and tests. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Brother and sister, I realize that sometimes we are brought to our knees. But when we are brought to our knees. 
let us with thanksgiving go to our Heavenly Father and make our petitions known unto Him. And if we do that, He shall lift us up with rejoicing in our hearts. Now, I know what it is to be in despair. I have been flat broke. I have been out of a job. I have been wounded and had multiple surgeries. But brothers and sisters, through it all, I looked to the promise of God. Don't keep dragging the things that brought the depression. Don't keep dragging them behind you. And don't keep looking at them as you're stepping forward. Put those things behind you. Reach forth to the promises of God. And I assure you, the Lord will strengthen you. I can say that because of the Word of God. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Not the sadness of your heart. The joy of the Lord is your strength. How many of you, and you don't have to raise your hand, how many of you want to be strong? Those out there of you that are listening, how many of you want to be strong? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Go with me to the book of Psalms. The fifth chapter. <clears throat> I'm just going to read the fifth verse and then I'm going to go several more places in Psalms. I said I'm going to the fifth chapter of the book of Psalms and the eleventh verse. But... Let all those that put their trust in Thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because Thou defendest them. Let them also that love Thy name be joyful in Thee. Brothers and sisters, I read this because of what Nehemiah said. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I know, brothers and sisters, that it's hard sometimes to rejoice when you're sick and suffering in pain and misery. No, it's not always easy to lift your voice But brothers and sisters, don't focus on your pain. Focus on the promise of healing. And then, in your heart, you can rejoice. You might still be in pain. You might still not feel worth two cents in your body, but in your spirit you can rejoice. Psalms 27. Starting in the first verse. 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? That goes right along with Romans the 8th chapter. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength. Of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies, and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, My heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. For in the time of trouble, He shall hide me in His pavilion, in the secret of His tabernacle, Shall he hide me? He shall set me up upon a rock. Brothers and sisters, if we can read these passages of Scripture and hear them read in our hearing and trust that they are promises from God, then brothers and sisters, we can overcome the torments that Satan brings against us. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of what? Of joy! I will sing! I will sing praises unto the Lord. How can you sing when you're in despair? How can you sing when you're in so much pain? You may not be able to sing Aloud, but let the songs be in your heart. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Don't let the depression, the fear, the anxiety, and the pain overcome your trust in the Word of God. Because, brothers and sisters, we know that Jesus suffered brutal beating for the peace of our mind. He suffered the cat of nine tails. His flesh was ripped. For our healing. Jesus said. I look. And my bones. Stare at me. They lashed him with that cat of nine tails. Until his bones were exposed. For our healing. He was chastened. 
for the chastisement of our peace. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. And I quoted a promise last Thursday. The Lord said He would never leave us, nor forsake us. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies or false witnesses, or four false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And brothers and sisters, that waiting goes right back to the word patience. Be patient and wait on the Lord. You might say, Brother Bud, I have prayed and I have prayed, but still, There is no answer. I want to ask you this question first. What is your attitude? Are you still dragging the things that put you in depression behind you? If you are, let them go. Brothers and sisters, our attitude has a whole lot to do with our situation. If we are harboring feelings because we have been chastened of the Lord, if we are harboring hurt feelings, you can rest assured that you will go through some more suffering. If you have been chastened of the Lord, take your chastisement gracefully. Take your chastisement with thanksgiving. Because whom the Lord loves, He chastens. Like I said before, when I got shot, it was a chastening because I made up my mind I was going to sit at home and serve the Lord. But when I asked God, why? What is this for? Immediately. You will not sit at home and serve me. Forsake not the assembling of the brethren, as the manner of some is. And you have all heard that before. But brothers and sisters, if your dilemma is because of a chastening, then take your chastening gracefully. 
And then, after you have been chastened, don't harbor hurt feelings. The Lord is gracious and merciful. And He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait. And I say, wait upon the Lord. Just go right to the 29th chapter. Starting in the first verse. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto His name. Now, can you glorify and give glory to the Lord that is due to His name when you have been chastened? You should be able to. I did not intend on bringing in the chastening of the Lord tonight. But that's the direction that the Lord has pressed on me. Can you give glory to His name? Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He maketh them also to skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calve and discovereth the forests. And in His temple doth every one speak of His glory. The Lord sitteth upon the flood. Yea, the Lord sitteth King forever. The Lord will give strength unto His people. The Lord will bless His people with peace. Sister Janet, as children of God, we can have peace no matter what we are going through with. I want peace of God in my life. I want peace of God for all of His children. And I'm speaking to somebody tonight. I don't know who it is. God knows. I have not a clue. But God knows. Put the things behind you that has brought your dilemma and reach forth to the promises of God. And the Lord will be your strength. Rejoice in the Lord and press on to the end. May the Lord bless you and comfort you and give you peace of mind. This is not all of the message I have a lot of other things that I want to bring in, but I know that my voice is getting kind of weak, so I won't keep you any longer. Heavenly Father, once again...
as we do humbly bow in your presence. Father, we thank you for your precious word and how that it speaks to your children. And I pray, Father, the things that I have spoke here tonight and read in the presence of the precious people. I pray, Father, that you will let it speak to their hearts. May you comfort them and give them peace. Father, may you minister to every need according to your perfect will. Father, we commit everything into your hand now. We humbly ask these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. I'll turn the service back over to Brother Allen. Brother Bud, for that. Tonight, I'm sure that it's helped someone for getting those things which are behind, looking to the things that are ahead. Sometimes it's, God will forgive you, but it's hard sometimes for people to forget. Because the devil will remind you of everything you've ever done, because... He's just like a uh, some of those old junk wagons they used to have. They had so much stuff on there it was dragging the ground and and all and and he'd drive down the road. This is a junk wagon. He'd holler. People would take their junk to him. Well, I guess he got something out of it. Praise the Lord tonight for this because. You don't have to carry that junk with you or drag it down the road behind you. So, may the Lord be praised tonight. Let us stand, please. Brother David, have him. If you have a need tonight, won't prayer, you come. Take this body that you made for me I give it Lord to you take my heart come and change your part cleanse and set me free my eyes to see where you believe Lord these old ears to hear me through just take Just like you, Lord, just.
all things. Oh, I give you thanks for all you, you have done. Oh, I am so blessed. Oh, my soul has found a rest. Oh, Lord. thankful for tonight. Well, you all have a good week, the rest of it. Remember, there will be no services Sunday morning, but there will be Sunday night. So come back at the same time on Sunday night and remember your brothers and sisters and uh, hope it. each one of you can make it uh, for the service this Sunday. So may the Lord bless you and keep you till we meet again. May he be praised. Brother Ron Barber, would you pray as we're dismissed, please?